What's going on guys? Today we're gonna try something slightly different and make a short little video. The videos I usually make that are about like 10 minutes and four seconds long, they take a lot of time to make and this week work's been really crazy. I gotta go to Florida tomorrow. I'm gonna be in Melbourne where a lot of space stuff happens and I wanna take you guys along, but a lot of that stuff is classified and I'm just not allowed to show any sort of behind the scenes footage. I'm not even allowed to take pictures with my phone. So times like this, I wanna just be able to sprinkle in little videos here and there. So here's something real simple we could talk about and I I chose the perfect background because I'm wearing black, the background's black, and this thing is black, so we just all look like a chameleon over here. I have no idea why I tried a unique background today. Let's let's go back to normal. <laughs> now this here is a lens mount adapter, but what's nice about it is that it has a variable ND filter built in. Check that out. And this one's all brand new from Canon, and it's built for their RF lineup. So, so far the EOS R, the EOS RP, and surely many more cameras to come with Canon's RF lens mount. Most of us probably already know what an ND filter is for. Basically to darken down the image so you can open up that aperture, get a nice shallow depth of field even if you're in a really bright place. If you want the deep dive on ND filters and polarizers then I got a video just for that. Most of us are familiar with these and these kind of thread on on top of your lens but basically every time you switch out lenses you have to make sure that you have the right thread size for it. A lot of times if you have lens hoods like this it won't fit on after you put on your filter and all also, your thread diameter changes, so a lot of times you need a different size lens cap. You can't just use the same lens cap. Oh, actually, that that, that actually kind of works. So. Never mind. <laughs> Another thing is the more layers of glass you have in front of your lens, the more likely you're gonna be able to see it. It's kind of like if you're in your car and you just shoot through the window. A lot of times if your window is clean enough, you're fine. But sometimes you lose a little bit of that super sharp contrast. And also you're more likely to see this if this is getting hit directly by light. So by throwing this on here and losing this, I notice a little bit more glare that I typically don't like. So the beauty of having the ND filter behind the lens is that it basically fixes both those problems. Some cameras like the Arri Alexa Mini or C300 Mark II, they have these filters that slide in right in front of the sensor. And on cinema cameras like the RED that don't have a built-in ND filter, then you have to slide it into this map box. So you have to have your different densities of ND filters and you gotta load it into your tray and then you can load it into your map box. And what's nice about map boxes is that you can keep the glass covered in a shade. So depending on your focal length, you wanna just try to keep as much light off that ND filter as possible. A single ND filter is gonna be better, but again, you don't wanna carry around a bunch of these, right? So variables, super convenient, but they are two layers of glass in here. I believe it's a circular polarizer and a linear polarizer or something like that. I'm not hundred percent sure, but you rotate one of them and it gets the whole image darker. The downside of that is that a lot of times I see a little bit of a color shift and also a little bit of vignetting can happen. I was really on the fence of getting this adapter because it was like 400 bucks, which is really expensive. I had to pay full price for it, by the way. And this was a pretty decent quality one from Tiffin and it's like 80 bucks. So it is a whole lot more money than getting a couple of these, but it's actually kind of nice. First of all, to adjust the variable ND filter, it's just this little tiny knob right here. And the throw is very short, so you could literally go from the darkest setting to the brightest very, very easily. So if I'm vlogging like this, which I do pretty often, I have my thumb right here, so I could pretty quickly adjust the brightness, which is real cool. I like how it also stops at the top and bottom. So if I just go like that, it's at the top. I know it's at the darkest setting. And if I just go like that, then that means it's the lightest. Opposed to these, where a lot of times they have these markers on the side, but it's kind of hard to use. You're like, where's the dot? Okay, this is the brightest, the darkest. A lot of us just end up just turning it until it changes. But before I keep talking, let me just take this out real quick. Should we go to the mountain biking shop that's down the street? I go hiking a lot, and every single time I go hiking, I see a mountain biker was zoom past me. I'm like, that looks way more fun than what I'm doing. But they're kind of expensive from what I heard. But hey, it doesn't hurt to just go to the shop real quick and take a peek, right? Outside exposure to inside exposure. Look at that. This oh, with one hand. With one hand. <laughs> look, mom, Ex no hand. <laughs> We're on our way to look at a mountain bike, not bike. Just like so. you go to the shelter to just look at dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I'm so tired. We went in the shop and the price tag for some of these bikes were insane. There was some that were like $8,000, like the electric ones. We are like, holy crap. We were just like, give us like, your most basic one. Maybe one day we'll get one of those electric ones because I'm tired. <laughs> oh God, that was fun though. I almost ate it pretty bad, but I didn't. I'm alive. I guess that's the only downside of this ND filter. So this is as low as this ND filter goes. 
And when I take it out, it's actually not a huge difference. So it's not like you always have to take it out when it gets dark, but definitely when you want the best low light possible. Like right now I'm all the way up at 12,800 ISO. So I definitely want to pull this out. But uh, yeah, the only thing is there's like a big opening on the side of the camera now. And they also have like a clear filter when you don't need an ND filter, which you can get. Yeah, I wish there was like a little storage container that I can just like throw this in safely and just cover the side of the camera. Cause right now there's actually an opening between the lens and the camera itself. So I'm going to slide this back in. But overall, I'm actually really liking this ND filter. Like, look at this, it's dark and it's bright. And I can just do it all with one hand. How cool is that? Anyways, we just took this whole trail to come all the way down here. And now we got to pedal all the way up it. So uh, wish us luck. How are you biking up this hill? I have no idea how Carrie's doing this. It's dark. I'm tired. I have an ND filter in here when I don't want it to be in there. I don't know how people pedal up entire mountains and stuff. This is crazy. I should have bought that $8,000 one with an electric motor. Then I would be able to keep up. Anyways, now that I just bought a mountain bike, I just, of course, I find out that one wheel just announced a new one wheel. And I've always wanted one, but they're so expensive. But this new one's under a thousand bucks and oh, I just bought a mountain bike. <laughs> Guys, I'm so bad at resisting temptation. <laughs> but overall, this lens filter is definitely pretty sweet because I didn't really see any vignetting and I didn't really see color shift until just that very, very top. But unless you're filming like the sun, you're probably never going to get to that point. Let's say you're filming, it gets dark and you need to pull out your ND filter. First of all, this kit didn't really come with any sort of container to keep just this alone in. Like maybe in the case, they could have put a little sleeve to just slide this into possibly. And obviously you're not gonna just wanna leave this open. You don't want a bunch of dust to fly in there. And of course, light can leak in there and splash onto your sensor. So obviously not a great solution to just leave that exposed. It would have been really cool if they had some sort of cover that flips up or like a little slidey door or something that you could just close up. But as of right now, if you wanna remove this ND filter, you take this out, don't know where I'm supposed to put it but then they sell these clear ones that you could slide in here maybe the clear one comes with like a little pocket or case that you can store this in safely i don't know if anyone's bought one let me know in the comments there's also gel holders and circular polarizers that you can slide in here anyways i gotta get packing got a few videos queued up for you so cool things coming see you later